62. Number 62, okay. More. Fifty two. Fifty two. Oh, that looks so hard. More. Hey, okay, if you cannot even come up to ten problems, I don't think we need to do any problems here, right? I disagree. Sixty one. Sixty one. All you need to do is to choose. I will be the one working on that. Fifty seven. 57, okay, so we have four so far. 56. 56. Let me do 40. number 36, uh, 41. 47. 47, okay. Uh, number 38 also. I'm sorry, not 47, 48. 48, okay, 48, so 1, ten. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, number 10, and then maybe one more, is it already 10 right now, it's 9, 60, number 60, okay, let's start, the smallest number is number 10, so number 10, we need to prove, prove, that sine x times secant x plus cosecant x equals to tangent x plus 1. Now then, uh, the way the style of proofing will be the same to what we have learned before, the proof we will prove from a more complicated side to a simpler side. I believe the complicated one here is the left-hand side, right? So I will prove from left to right. Left-hand side equals to, copy down what you see on the left-hand side first. Don't do any computation. Now this one line here is one point for you. Okay, proof the direction of uh, the proof, the direction of the proof, the left hand side, whatever you see on the left hand side. Okay, that's one point there. Now, then I go on. Uh, what do you think I will do in the next line? Distribute the sign x. Uh, do you want to do it now? We have three functions here. I think what I will do if I have more than sine and cosine, I will rewrite them into uh, sine and cosine. Is it okay? Yeah. Now then from here we distribute, we get this is sine x over cosine x plus sine x over x. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sine x over sine x. Now the first term becomes? Tangent. Tangent x, don't forget the x though. Plus. One. Mm -hmm. Which is our right hand side that's the end of our proof. <clears throat> okay, that's for number 10. <clears throat> Actually, I see you may want to consider doing number 20. Let's see, let me show you number 20 before I do the rest. Number 20, proof 1 minus sine theta equals to 
cosine square theta over one plus sine theta. Are we gonna go from right to left? You can, you can. In fact, for this question, I will show you both, uh, left to right and right to left. But let's do right to left first because I think uh, visually, uh, the the expression on the right hand side is more complicated, right? So I will prove from right to left. Right hand side, we have uh, cosine squared theta over one plus sine theta. That's your one point. Now then, uh, what can I do? Here's the plan. I will multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of the denominator is the same expression, but you change the sign in the middle. So plus becomes minus. Are you following me? Yes. So I multiply by one, which I express as one minus sine theta. Now then on the top, I get cosine squared theta times one minus sine theta. At the bottom, I hope you can see why I multiply by the conjugate. When I multiply by the conjugate, it becomes difference of squares at the bottom, right? Yes. And then what do we get at the bottom now? If you multiply difference of squares, and A plus B, A minus B becomes A squared minus B squared. Okay, now then what happened at the bottom now? Go for going further. On the denominator, it becomes? Cosine? Square. Almost right? Yeah, that's right, cosine squared, which then now cancels, right? Becomes one minus sine theta, which is what we have on the left-hand side, right? That's our yes. side. That's the end of the proof. Mm. Now, what if I do from left to right? It turns out that it's still not too hard. It's still not too hard. So I do from left to right. The left hand side, I have one minus sine theta. What I will do, I will multiply that one minus sine theta by the conjugate. One plus sine theta over one plus sine theta. And you see that this is actually over one, right? Yes. Then on the top I get, on the on the top I get, one minus sine theta times one plus sine theta over one plus sine theta. Now don't cancel the one plus sine theta though, because if you cancel, then you go back here. If you cancel one plus sine theta, you go back here. Okay, now that's not the reason we will multiply by one plus sine theta. The reason is because we get difference of squares on the top. One minus sine squared theta on the top, one plus sine theta. And on the top we will get cosine squared theta over one plus sine theta. That's our right hand side. That's the end of the proof. Okay, so for this number 20, 
we happen to have two different ways to do that. <clears throat> Okay, what's the next question? I did number 10 already. Next one is number 36. Number 36. One over one minus sine x plus one over one plus sine x equals to two secant square x. We need to prove that. I think I asked this question at least twice in my uh, in my career, maybe even three times in my trigonometry class. Prove. I will prove from I think from left hand side it's more complicated. Right? Yes. One over one minus sine x plus one over one plus sine x. Now, because we are adding fractions, you need to think about the LCD. What's the LCD? Sine x. Common denominator. Yeah. Uh, least common denominator will be one minus sine x. Uh huh times one plus sine x. That's right. So for each fraction there, I will multiply by uh, something to get the LCD one minus sine x here. I will multiply the top and the bottom by one plus sine x. Then, what happened at the bottom? Becomes one minus Co sine squared theta. Uh, it, it, that right. becomes cosine two, right? Uh, cosine squared. Later on, let's write it as one minus sine squared first. Is it okay? Yes. Now on the top, I have one plus sine x and here i get one minus sine x now that's one plus sine x over <coughs> sine squared x plus one minus sine x over cosine squared What do you think we will do next? Add them. Can we add them now? Yes. Why? Same denominator. That's right. And that's the reason we did LCD earlier, so that they have common denominator, so that we can put them together under one fraction. So this is one plus sine x plus one minus sine x which will be cosine squared x that will be huh? no. no 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 what do you have on the top Zero? Two. Two, not zero. The sine x cancel, but not the ones, right? Over cosine yeah. squared x, but this is equals to two cosecant, I'm sorry, not two cosecant, two secant squared. 
Hear my baby is talking to me. Yeah. Yes. yes. Are you busy? <laughs> okay. So that's what I have on my right hand side. It's for number thirty six. What's the next question, by the way? Let me scroll it up. Next question is number 38. Yeah. 38. Uh, let me ask you to try that question. Number 38. Cause proof. Cause secant x minus 1 over cause secant x plus 1 equals to. 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x. <clears throat> now, your first step will be after you write the first line, you will rewrite the sine uh, cosecant x as one of a sine. So, let me give you the hint what you will do. First, uh, write the first line. Now your second line will be uh, rewrite uh, cosecant x as one over sine x. Uh, you will have complex uh, complex fractions, and then from there you have two choices. Uh, basically, you will simplify. Okay, let me give you uh, three or four minutes from here. Now from here, from here to simplify, there are actually two different ways. I prefer the second method, but let me show you the first method first. But I hope uh, all of you get this far. Yeah. Yes. Right? Now then, I think if you simplify it regular way from there, you will do the LCD on the top. Over do LCD at the bottom. <clears throat> and then you put them together. So on the top, it becomes one minus sine x over sine x. And at the bottom, we get one plus sine x over sine x. Uh, any one of you doing it this way so far? Maybe not? Yes. Okay, one. Okay, now then I go on. So once I have a fraction on the top, divided by a fraction at the bottom, it's the same to a fraction, the numerator, multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator. And you see the sine x cancels, right? That is our right hand side, I believe. That's the end of the proof. 
Now, uh, however, another way to simplify uh, complex fractions, so somewhere up there we have 1 over sine x minus 1 over 1 over sine x plus 1. Another way to do that is to simplify this. I multiply the top and the bottom by the LCD. I mean, the LCD of all of this, the LCD of all of this is just sine x. Now, then I will distribute that sine x to the first term. Sine x multiply by this will give us what? Multiply by this will give us what? One over sine x times sine x. Uh, one. That's just one. That's right. Now and then minus one times sine x is what? Sine x. That's sine x. Now you do the same to the bottom. One over sine x multiplied by sine x is. One, one plus one times sine x is sine x. Surprise, that's what we need. A lot faster. Hmm. Okay, that's for number 38. I will go back there later on. What is the next one? Number 48. Proof 1 over cosecant x minus cotangent x. Cosecant x minus cotangent x that's equal to cosecant x plus cotangent x. Now, to do this problem, it depends on how much you memorize, how much you memorize the the trick, uh, basic trick identities, okay? But if you don't memorize anything, if you don't memorize anything but the ratio and reciprocal, you're still able to do this. Suppose I do from left-hand side. Suppose I do from left-hand side. What do you do from here? Reciprocal. Huh? What reciprocal? <laughs> what reciprocal? You mean you cos second becomes yes. Uh huh. One over sine x here minus cosine x over sine x. Is it what you mean? Okay, and then what? <clears throat> That's complex fraction. I don't like it, so I will multiply the top and the bottom by the overall LCD sine x. So on the top, I will get sine x over 1 minus cosine x. Then what do you do from here? Multiply by the conjugate. 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. 
now uh, let me ask you to do this uh, see what happened in the next two or three steps yeah i think in two or three steps in three steps you already get the answer there okay let me give you maybe two minutes or three minutes from here oh shit oh why once you hear me you say oh shit Okay, one first call sign X on the top. Okay, at the bottom I have, what do we have at the bottom? One okay. minus cosine squared X. Okay, great. And what will that be in the next step? So I copy paste the numerator, right? And denominator becomes sine squared x. Cancel the sign. Hmm, what should I do from here? Can we do reciprocal identity? Huh? What's that? Reciprocal identity. Not yet. Separate them first. Like this. It's okay. Then we get reciprocal. Uh, Identity. So this is cosecant x plus cotangent x, which I believe is our right hand side. Now, I want to show you another way. Uh, this method may require some memorization of the basic uh, identity, Pythagorean identity. I will start from the left-hand side. So, uh, prove from left-hand side, uh, I have one over cosecant x minus cotangent x. Now then what I will do is I multiply by the conjugate. I multiply by the conjugate of the denominators. So I say denominator then I get cosecant x plus cotangent x cosecant x plus cotangent x. Now then on the top we will get cosecant x plus cotangent x over what do we get at the bottom? Cosecant squared x uh -huh. minus cotangent squared x. That's right. Now then, uh, we remember by the, the Pythagorean identity, basic property group number two, uh, point number three. That says that one plus cotangent squared theta equals to cosecant squared theta. Do you remember that? Which if I apply that here, then what do I get on the denominator? Cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x equals to one. 
imagine a cosecant square theta minus cotangent square theta. Right? Okay. But then if I divide by one, that's basically the same to whatever we have on the numerator. That's what we get on the right hand side. <clears throat> okay, now that's for number 48. Uh, now the thing is, the thing is I have to admit, uh, not, uh, not every one of you memorize this and we don't really see the use of this one formula though. So if you kind of like don't see that the first place, uh, you're fine, you're normal. Okay, but you need to see that often enough. That's why I show you one time right now. Uh, so that uh, in other time, hopefully you will happen to see that. Now let me go on. What's the next question? The next question is number one. <clears throat> you see number fifty two, I said a number. Yes. I remember when you asked number, somebody asked number three people, I said, oh, so hard. Okay, so proof cosine to the fourth A minus sine to the fourth A equals to one minus two sine square a. Where do we prove this from? Left to right or right to left? Left to right. Left to right, okay, I agree. Yeah, because the left hand side uh, apparently is more complicated. So that's cosine to the fourth a minus <coughs> sine to the fourth a. Now from here, what do you think we will do? Factor out cosine to the fourth A. Huh? Pythagorean identities? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, factoring. that's something to do with factoring. Factoring, what kind of factoring? I got the uh, not factor up. Oh, uh, cosine to the power of four a minus sine four a. Well, that's what we have right now. Oh, sorry. So, cosine square a plus. Mm -hmm. What do you call sine. that? Mm. I don't know. Not the right. What do you call this type of factoring? Grouping? No. Foil? No, foil if you multiply them instead. Difference of squares. <laughs> <There's a> <laughs> you guys thinking too hard. We did that very often, right? Yeah, well, anyway, uh, do you see that though? Difference of squares? Yeah. Uh, now, then, from here you see what happened on the first factor. What is that equal to? That's B to 1. Can I just pray? Oh, what is B to 1? Pythagorean identity. Is equal to one. 
that's equal to one. That's right. That's equal to one. Okay. So times. Uh, let me copy this. That's called sine squared a minus sine squared a. Now then my issue is I already have one of the sine squared a in my solutions here. This is my solutions, right? Okay. okay. I already have the sine squared a, one of them. Now I need to get another sine squared a from here. How do you think I will do it? replace that cosine squared a. You replace the cosine squared a as... Secant? No, you're thinking with what? I replace that cosine squared a as 1 minus sine squared a. How? Oh. Yeah, because cosine squared a plus sine squared a equals to one. So let me do the side note here. As cosine squared a plus sine squared a equals to one. Right? So cosine squared a is equal to one minus sine squared a. Right? That's what I did there. Now then, in the next step, you basically combine these two minus sine squared a together. One minus two sine squared a. our right hand side that's where we stop the proofing we're done with the proof okay so uh, if we review this question the first thing we did was a difference of squares and then using the, one of the Pythagorean identity actually we use it twice the first time we use it is here. That's the first time we use it. Okay. The second time we use it is here. Okay. Uh, right now it's 807. Let's take a little break. Uh, 10 minutes. We come back at uh, 820. What's the next question then? After 52 is 56. <clears throat> Let's say 8.30, but 8.30 we are done with number 56. 8.30, we are done with number 58 or 56? Yeah. 56. I think, yeah, I think it's 56. Number 56, we have cosecant squared y plus cotangent squared y. Over cosecant to the fourth y minus cotangent to the fourth y show that this is equal to one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I think you will apply a, a difference of squares at the bottom and cancel with the top. Okay, that's the plan. Anyway, we come back at 8.30.
<clears throat> I will factor the denominator by difference of squares. And notice that something cancel. Is it right? So I get one over cosecant squared y minus cotangent squared y. <clears throat> and again, by d23, the denominator is 1, which is 1. That's our right hand side. That's the end of the proof. Now, what is B23? B23 is 1 plus cotangent squared uh, theta equals to cosecant squared theta, such that cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals to 1. <clears throat> That's for number 56. Let's go on to number 57. For number 57, I know it's actually on the more difficult side because you have to memorize one type of factory. Prove that sine cube a minus a over sine a uh, minus 2 equals to sine squared a plus 2 sine a plus 4. <clears throat> now, uh, the key is actually on the numerator. That's difference of cube. Now, what is the pattern for difference of cube? X cube minus Y cube is equal to X minus Y X squared plus xy plus y squared. <clears throat> you will see that the sign here are the same. Okay, the sign here always opposite of that sign and the sign here always positive. Usually, some teachers say that you need to remember the soap. The same, opposite, always positive. Okay, that's where the, the acronym SOAP coming from. That also covers at the same time, if we have sum of cubes. If we have sum of cubes, then it will be the same sign here, opposite sign here, but the last one always positive. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, so proof from left to right, sine cube a minus a over sine a minus 2. Notice that on the top here, we can see that as uh, that's the same to sine cube a minus 2 cube. Right. 
so that what happened on the top is by factory. So it's sine A minus two? Sine A minus two. And then sine squared A. Uh huh. Plus sine A mm -hmm. plus oh, sine A two. Sine A times two, or let me write two sine A. Is it okay? Yes. And then plus two squared. Now notice that the one of the factor actually cancel. Right? This cancels. This guy cancel with this. Right? Then I end up with sine squared a plus two sine a plus four. That's what we have on the right hand side. Okay, so you need this for number 57. In fact, number 60 have the same idea. Number 60 have the same idea. Let me scroll this up a little bit. Number 60, that's your next question. I prove that one plus cotangent cube A over one plus cotangent A. I'm sorry, not A, it's T. Yeah. Is equal to Equals to what? Uh, cosecant square t minus cotangent t. Now let me ask you to do this in how many minutes? Maybe three, four minutes. But notice that on the top, that's actually sum of cubes. Okay, sum of cubes, and one of the factor just like earlier will cancel. So the proof you will prove from left hand side. One plus cotangent cube t over one plus cotangent t. Now factor the top one using sum of cubes that I have up here. Okay, uh, maybe so the, three minutes. Yes, huh? So, so the positive turns into a negative. This is equal to what we have on the top. One plus cotangent T times. One mm -hmm. minus cotangent T uh -huh. plus cotangent squared T. Good. Over one plus cotangent T. Uh, we see that something canceled, right? So let me point out the one cancel out of this. So we have now one minus cotangent t plus cotangent square t. Now then we combine these two guys. This guy and this guy give us what? B23. That's B23, that's right. Oh this this property, this identity show up a lot today, huh? So that will be cosecant square t minus cotangent t, which is our right hand side. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's for number 60. The next one is number 61, but I saw that number 61 and 62 are quite similar. 
Uh, I will do number 62, the harder one, and then I will ask you to do the easier one later. Okay, uh, number 62 through Tangent square x over sine x plus cosine x equals to cosine squared x sine x minus cosine cube x over sine to the fourth x minus sine squared x. Where do you think you would start? Instinct. Right hand side. From right hand side, we will go to the left. That's right. Okay, right hand side because it seems to be a lot more complicated. Now what? <clears throat> Notice on the top do we have common factor. Cosine. How many? Two. Two. So cosine squared x being factored out, so I get sine x minus cosine x, <clears throat> right? While at the bottom, I have sine squared x factor out. I get two sine squared x minus one. So far so good? Yes. Okay, notice that uh, we get our cotangent here. Cotangent squared. Right? I was writing the side that's cotangent squared x. You can write over one if you like. Okay. And then sine x minus cosine x on the top. At the bottom, we have this 2 sine squared x minus 1. Maybe I use this color. Now, I will split this. I will split this becomes, I will split that becomes sine squared x plus sine squared x. Minus 1. It's quite tricky, I understand. It's quite tricky. Now, the reason is because I will keep my cotangent squared x over one. The harder part is really how to massage the second, uh, the second uh, factor, especially the denominator. Now, I will put this together. I will put this together. Now, what is sine squared x minus one? Cosine oh, x. Almost right. Cosine, oh, cosine squared, squared x. x. Still almost right. What we want is sine squared x minus one. So sine squared x stay here. The one move to the left becomes minus one, right? What happened on the right hand side? Don't see it? Okay, do it another way. So suppose I move sine squared x. 
So cosine squared x equals to what? 1 minus sine squared x, right? Yeah. Okay, now, so what happened if I reverse the order of subtraction? Negative cosine squared x? Negative cosine squared x. So what happened here, I will get sine squared x stays the same, and then the red color becomes negative cosine squared x. <clears throat> what do you think you will do next? I think the next step is easy. Difference of squares? That's right. So I get cotangent squared x over 1 times sine x over minus cosine x over uh, sine x plus cosine x sine x minus cosine x. And you can see that this group cancel this group and we end up with what we need. We get our cosine cotangent squared x on the top and sine x plus cosine x at the bottom. Is it what you need? Yeah, that's what you need to the bottom. Right? So this is our left hand side. That's the end. I think the one that is so hard to imagine is these three steps here. From this step to this step. Yeah. From here. It's actually quite hard to imagine. <clears throat> okay, now this one is for number 62. Uh, would you like to do number 61? Let me give you some time. Let me give you maybe three minutes to do number, to get a feeling on number 61. Number 61 looks like, and then I will go over the course. Number 61, proof uh, tangent x over sine x minus cosine x is equal to sine squared x. plus sine x cosine x. Over cosine x minus two cosine cube x. <clears throat> okay, let me give you maybe five minutes. from right to left, right hand side, that sine squared x plus sine x cosine x over cosine x minus 2 cosine cube x. On the top, what I, what I do? <coughs> 
cot sine x. That dot sine x. So I get sine x plus cos sine x. And at the bottom, I factor the cos sine x. I get 1 minus 2 the cos sine square x. Now, just like before, that this gives us the tangent x, right? Yes. That's our tangent x over 1. While on the right hand side, the second factor, I get sine x plus cos sine x. Uh, I will break this up. I will break this up. Okay, I will break that up. Becomes 1 minus cos sine squared x minus cos sine squared x. Are you okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Where uh, 1 minus cos sine squared x will be. Sine squared x. Okay. Minus cosine squared x. <clears throat> and then I factor the denominator further. Something cancel, this thing cancel, and to our surprise, we basically get what we need. <clears throat> we get tangent x over sine x minus cosine x. That's our left hand side, Mr. That's the end of the proof. <clears throat> Okay, uh, that's for our 5.1. Suggested homework from uh, 5.1 will be suggested homework from 5.1 will be number one, <clears throat> number one to number 31, every other odd, and then number 33 to 59, the odd ones. Yeah, this way I hope you have less things to do. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough for 5.1. Okay, let me go on to 5.2. Of course, with the, the amount of time I have, I won't be able to finish 5.2 today. And... And the thing is this, let's see the timeline. On April the 13th, on April the 13th, no class, no class, but uh, available, I will be available for uh, question and answer. On April the 15th, you have a test too, right? Now, the thing is from April 15 to April 20, uh, I want you to study something. I want you to memorize. So, so in April the 20th, we will do 5.2 in more four. We'll do 5.2 and hopefully we have 5.3 also. Uh, and April the 22nd, we do 5.3, 5.4, maybe with 5.5 depends on how far we can go okay but what i meant is this between here to here okay, i need you to memorize i need you to memorize group one okay thomas what is group one now we already have uh, basic identities 
we already have basic identities basic identities what is the basic identity one ratio and reciprocal How about basic identity two Pythagorean identities Pythagorean identity How about basic identities three Co-function? Co-functions, okay. How about my basic identity four? Negative angle. Where sine of negative x equals to negative sine x. Uh, cosine negative x equals to cosine x. Tangent negative x equals to negative tangent x. The proof we used at that time was actually we used picture. We used picture. And uh, we argue that if we go If we go positive angle, if we go positive angle here, if we go positive angle here, let's say this is angle theta, then what is the coordinate here? If this is unit circle, then the coordinate is cosine theta, sine theta. However, if I go negative angle, this is negative theta here, then the coordinate here is cosine negative theta, sine negative theta. Now, the thing is, when we look at the position, when we look at the position, the x component are the same. The x component are the same. Now, that implies, that implies cosine negative theta is the same to cosine theta. The x component the same. However, the y component are opposite. This is the, the Y component for the top one, the blue one is sine theta, okay? Which is the opposite of uh, the one at the bottom. So let's say this is sine theta. What we have here is the opposite negative sine theta. Okay, so from there we see sine negative theta equals to negative sine theta. Now, I hope you remember that. <coughs> Uh, we went over that in class. We, I remember we went over that in class. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I would like you to memorize group one. So this is not the group of basic identities anymore. This is group one, which we, which is the thing we will go over on, <clears throat> on Monday. I think that's on the 25th. 
Okay, group one is sum and difference formula. Now, this sum and difference formula formulas consists of six, and I need you to memorize it in this order. The first one, cosine of sum, a plus b equals to cosine a, cosine b minus sine a, sine b. In future, we will call that 1, 1. We will call that formula 1, 1. <clears throat> and on the 20th, I'm sorry, did I say 25, 25 earlier? On April the 20th, we will prove this first, okay? We'll prove all six formulas from this group, but uh, the hardest one to prove is actually the first one. The second formula is quite easy to prove. It's cosine of A minus B equals to cosine A, cosine B plus sine A, sine B. The third formula, sine sum A plus B equals to sine A, cosine B, plus <coughs> cosine A, sine B. Formula number four, sine of difference, sine A minus B equals to sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. <clears throat> I need you to memorize this very, very, very well. Okay, so far we only have four. Uh, two more, two more. Uh, formula number five, the tangent. Tangent A plus B is equal to tangent A plus tangent B over one minus tangent A times tangent B. And the sixth one, tangent of difference tangent of A minus B is tangent A minus tangent B over one plus tangent A tangent B. Okay, I need you to memorize this, memorize by April the 20th class. Okay? Everybody okay with this? Yeah. Okay, so on Monday we don't have class, but I will be available for question and answer. On Wednesday you have tests. I will post the tests on at seven o'clock, approximately at seven o'clock, maybe a couple minutes before that. Uh, and then on the Monday after, on the 20th, then we will start 5.2 formally. But at that time, I need you to already memorize this. Okay, here's the thing though. I want you to realize one thing. I want you to realize that the way I run my tests later on, basically I put my trust in you. Because if you have open book, you have open note, I will not know. Is it right? Let me close the recording.